we have our little pond here. We have our flax. And there's one little spot here. If you can see that, where the this white fungus has started to grow in the flax. And if you see that when your flax is drying in the shucks, uh, you have to just take it out and dry it immediately because that eats everything. But it's just a little bit. This is not too bad. When I first attempted to do this, I researched how it was done in, like in Holland and where they had the canals. And they would have wooden boxes where they'd put the flax in the box, sink it in the, the canals, and flood the canals again and leave it for a length of time. So I didn't know exactly how to lay it in the water, but what I discovered is you need to take the little ties off and then loosen it up because you want the water to get in among all of the flax. If you don't do that, there'll be spots that are not quite redded. So, well, you don't have to, to go too far. This is maybe two and a half feet or so. And just loosen the flax up. And be careful too that it's not tangled. You don't want a big mass. It's, it has to be, keep the tops and the bottoms together. I'll bring this whole pile down. What I found is that it takes a couple of days for the flax to get waterlogged. So it's going to float, which you don't want. So I had to find some way of keeping the flax under the water. And that's why in the countries that had canals, they put them in wooden boxes so they could sink the whole thing in the water. And we tried putting stones on the flax and the stones would fall off. So we tried putting boards with the rocks on top and a lot of times the boards would tip over, rocks would fall down and the flax would come up. The best thing I found, if you can find a couple of old doors, you can just sit the doors on top of the flax. This is almost like a uh, laying it out for ground redding, but you can get a nice big pile. You can put them right on top of each other as long as it's fairly loose. Also what I've found is that you really should have nice warm days to do this. Right? Uh, mid 70s to mid 80s is a good temperature to have. Clear skies. When it's overcast, the water temperature goes down, so it's not as, it doesn't rot as fast. But what we have discovered as a, like a rule of thumb is four days. And that's usually enough for the water redded flax. If the temperature is warm, it just seems to work perfectly. The, the temperature is nice here now, uh, even though it's October, so I think we'll be all right. They're expecting rain tomorrow, but the temperature is not supposed to get too low. So. I think we're going to be all right. If you have a lot of flax, you'll need several doors. Usually when we would have a big crop, I have seven or eight doors I lay out. And I'll put a batch in. Two days later, I'll put a second batch in. So then I have some coming out every two days and you don't end up with a load of flax all at once it has to come out.
And see what I'm doing? I'm just sort of piling this up. It's nice and loose. There's no spots that are just crushed together. I've read of people uh, putting their flax in an old uh, tub and changing the water every day, which you can do. What that seems to do is really take all of the, the uh, the color out of the flax so it gets very light colored. What you'll find with water redding is that the flax is a lighter color. It's, it's, a, it's the flaxen haired color of flax. The ground redding uh, gives it a darker color. Now I have this all laid out. And set it down like that. Now I'm gonna get my door, put my door on top of it. right in the middle there. Now what I'm going to have to do is get a second door, I think, because this is a little bit too long. So I'll get the second door. Here's a second door. There we go. Lay it right on top. And then what I do is move this out a little bit. What will happen in a day or so, the flax will begin to saturate with water and it will actually sink into the ground, I mean, into the body of water. So you want to give it a little space here so it can, it can do that. The looser it is, the easier it will be for it to ret. This is pretty nice. Make sure everything's nice and everything's loose here. That's good. When you're doing the doors, you don't have to put any rocks on top of it because it's completely underwater. And as it begins to get waterlogged, it will, it will lower down a little bit. This is really a good way to keep the flax. This has to come out in four days and then be laid out to dry. We have a stone wall where we dry the flax, or you can use a fence. Anywhere, with just, don't put it on the ground. It has to be up so the whole thing can have air coming through it. And I found if you have too much flax drying at once, it's hard to find a place to lay it. Or if you have an old bench, just lay it over the bench. Even a long board on two rocks, just lay the flax so it's laying over the board. And you'll get to see that when we take the flax out in four days. As an added precaution, I have this twine here tied to a tree. And we have a handy doorknob. We're going to tie the boards to the shore. There we go. If a good wind comes up, this could just drift out into the middle of the pond, so it would be very hard to get. But this will keep it handy. So we've sort of docked our flax boards here. All right, here's some of the flax after four days. It's difficult to tell when it's wet just how 
threaded it is, but you can break it. And you can see what will happen here. Fiber comes off. Fiber peels away from the plant. It's still pretty strong. Any longer than that and it would rot. There'd be nothing left. Alright, now we'll take the flax over and we'll set it out to dry. I have a plank here to set up so I can take the flax and I could lay it on the side here, but I think I might just lay it on top because it's pretty short. Spread it out. And we'll dry the flax. It doesn't take long to dry if you have a nice sunny day. We found that even in one day, day and a half, the flax will dry. There we go. And I'll also put some on the stone wall that keeps the heat nicely when it's sunny. I stretch it out so there's not a lot of heavy clumps. There we go. When I spread this out, it's almost like laying it on the ground. You want it to be so that you can see a little bit through the flax. Now we have our flax ready to dry. So we'll come back in a day and see how it's doing. We're checking the flax that we had in the water for four days. Um, after one day it dried out because it was sunny. So this is really the test to be able to see how it is when it's dry. See that nice little crunch? I break the flax. What's happening is the inner core here is actually doing, being crushed. And then as I scrape it with my fingers, the flax fibers themselves are easily separated from the, the inner stalk and there's still a, a waxy outer crust that comes away. So here all the fibers are loose. And if I take just one or two here, I can actually peel the plant. Find some good ones here. Break that. Peel that all away and what we'll have left is the, the, the flax fiber. This is the flax and hair variety here because the, the water tends to bleach it and it really does look like blonde hair. Uh, 